It's time! It's time to play Tales from Two Trails. I'm so excited. <laughs> hey guys, my name is Kim and this is Expedition Three Pages and like I said, today we're going to be playing Tales from Two Trails, which is round three, game two, I think. If this is your first time watching a Tales from Two Trails video, then I do actually have a full length video where I go through all the rules in more depth than I will here. So I can link that down in the description if you wanted to take a look at that. But essentially this round is a bit different anyway because I am playing Tales from Two Trails against you guys. So we are battling to get to the end of the trails, whatever trail we land on first. And if I get to the trail first, I get to buy myself a book. And if you guys get to the end of the trail first, then that means that I have to buy one of you guys a book. <laughs> so yes, we're seeing what happens. Could be a giveaway at the end, we don't know. I do wanna say thank you to everybody who's joined in. So many people have joined in this month, it's so cool. I actually haven't gone through the list completely yet to see what the final results are. So after I've done this clip, I'm gonna go and do that and then we'll work out how to start the game. But yeah, I'm excited to see. I think last time I looked, you guys were one off fulfilling all the prompts. So we'll see if you fulfilled that last prompt or not. Okay, so let me tell you how I did in the month of February. So I, we all had six prompts to fulfill. Maybe we'll go through a prompt. I'll tell you if I fulfilled it or not. And then I'll let you know if you guys fulfilled it or not and then we can move forward on the board or backwards if if the case may be. So the first prompt that we landed on was your move and it was a green 40 by 40 which was uh, one of the 40 books off my 40 by 40 list but for you guys you could use just any goal um, that you wanted and I did really enjoy seeing all the goals that everybody was using for this year so I found that very exciting and interesting to read about throughout the month so thank you for that <laughs> and I am pleased to say that I did fulfill this prompt I read The Time Machine by HG Wells which I did enjoy for the most part although I did have some criticisms I'm not going to talk about it here um, hopefully I will eventually put the video out where I do talk about this um, and if I do soon I'll link it in this description at some point. Okay, so I completed 40 by 40, and so I'm gonna take a step forward on the path. Now, you are here currently on free choice. Um, so, oops, move that there. Is that where you are? Or are you down here? Let me check. Okay, so yeah, I was totally wrong. You guys are all the way down here at this free choice, not this free choice. <laughs> So let's put you there before I try and cheat you out of path. Anyway, so let's go through. For goal number one, first up we've got Boucher Nashishi who read Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. We've got Amy uh, who read Have I Told You This Already by Lauren Graham. Brittany read Lost Witch Pape by Praed Crutcher because Brittany's goal was to read more arcs. Jessica read Fury Song by Rosaria Munda. A Bill read Slayer by Kirsten White. Michelle S read In the Shadow Garden by Liz Parker, and that's because also Michelle's goal is to read more arcs, specifically NetGalley arcs. Amy from Amy's Bookish Life read Spy Family by Tatsuya Endo, because Amy's goal is to read more manga. Ashley from Ashley's Media Addiction is reading more Scottish authors or books set in Scotland, and so for this prompt, she read Sky by Holly Webb. Amanda from The Reading and Writing Life has the goal to continue a series and so she read Stones of Light by Zach Argyle. Uh, yeah, Stones of Light by Zach Argyle. Um, Nat Cat's Bookish Cafe read How to Be a Movie Star by TJ Clune and that was for 20 books in 2023. Whitney from Tibera's Den has a goal to read uh, classics and so Whitney read Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Louisa has a goal to read 23 books in 2023, and she read Warrior of the Wild by Tricia Levinsella. Nadia has a goal to read 12 plays, which is a really interesting goal, I think. I really like that. Um, I don't know how many plays I've read since school, but I should probably try some again. <laughs> And um, anyway, Nadia read Amelie by Craig Lucas. Ruby from Ruby Red has a goal to read 30 books by the time she's 30. And so she read Ty uh, Love in the Time of Cholera by, oh, I haven't got the name written here and I do know it, but I can't remember it, but I'll put the picture on the screen. And finally we have Star Bevanil. Sorry if I'm butchering your username there. And their goal for the year is to read books from A to Z. And so they've, 
finished Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. So yeah, that's everybody, and that is a lot of people who read for that prompt, so I really appreciate that. And it does mean you can go one step forward. Prompt number two was Expedition Three Pages, so I had to fulfil one of my Expedition Three Pages books, which is from my Reading Around the World challenge that I do with Emily from Emily Beth Hall. And for you guys, you had to read a book from or set in Mauritania or written by an author from Mauritania. But for me, I did finally finish The Elimination by Ritty Pan. Guys, this book is really difficult, but yeah, it was a really powerful read to say the least. Okay, so you guys, Expedition Free Pages, you had to read a book set in Mauritania or written by an author from Mauritania. It had to be predominantly about Mauritania. So I wasn't sure if you guys would do this or not, so let's see if you have. <laughs> um, so the goal is three of you have to read a book. We actually had two people read The Desert and the Drum by Mubarak Old Bayuruk. This was read by both Amanda from the Reading and Writing Life, and Whitney from Tilbury's Den, and it looks really good. So yeah, and oh, um, this one was translated by Rachel McGill. And in my head, I thought that you guys would be the only ones to read, and I was like, oh, they're going back on the trail, but no, <laughs> that didn't happen. Jessica also read a book from Mauritania. Jessica read Moonless Starless Sky by Alexis Akewo, and Michelle, who now has a channel uh, called Reading On My Break, so I do recommend everybody go and check out Michelle's new channel. And Michelle read Angel of Mauritania and The Curse of the Language by Mohamed Bouya Bamba. So yeah, four people read for Mauritania, so definitely pass that and you get another step forward. Prompt number two was non-fiction and for that, I'm just going to lean back to my little stack of books there, um, I read Self Help for Your Nerves by Dr. Claire Weeks, and so I fulfilled this one. Next up is non-fiction. So Michelle read Zelensky by Serhii Rudenko. Amy from Amy's Bookish Life read The Life-Changing Power of Gratitude by Mark Recklau. Boucher Nashishi read Who Am I and If So How Many by Richard David Precht. Amy read the Challenge is the Way. I'm not sure who the author is for that one. Carly read Anne Frank by Stephen Krensky. Abil read A River in Darkness, One Man's Escape from North Korea by Masaji Ishikawa. Amanda from The Reading and Writing Life read The Effort Diet. Danny from Somber Honey Books read Why Has Nobody Told Me This Before by Dr. Julia Smith. Whitney from Tiburus Den read West From Home Letters by Laura Ingalls Wilder. Jessica read The Disordered Cosmos by Chandra Prescott Weinstein. Nadia read Nine Zoo Racimus by Valentina Gianella. And finally, Ruby from Ruby read, read <laughs> The Body Keeps the Score, which I don't have the author's name written down there either. Sorry about that, but it'll be on the screen. So yeah, again, another step forward. Oops. Prompt number four gave us book club book, pick, buddy read, read along book, something like that. And for that, I ended up reading North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell. Guys, I loved this book. I loved it. And then I immediately went and watched the BBC drama TV series adaptation thing, which I also loved. So recommend and recommend highly. It was really good book club read, or buddy read, or read along, etc. So we have Amy read Down Among the Sticks and Bones by Shauna Maguire, Ashley from Ashley's Media Addiction read Merrick by Anne Rice, Carly read Nevermore by Jessica Townsend, Jessica read Wrong Place, Wrong Time by Gillian McAllister, Abil read The Seven Necessary Sins for Girls and Women by Mona Eltaway, Amanda read The Castle of Otranto by Horace Walpole. Amy from Amy's Bookish Life read Girl Waits with Gun by Amy Stewart. Amanda from The Reading and Writing Life read For a Read Along Full Moon by Jim Butcher. Danny from Somber Honey Books read Iron Widow by Zyron J. Zeo. Whitney from Tiburus Den read Dream Cake by Lisa Kleypas. Nadia read Migrations by Charlotte McGuire. 
McConaughey. I was going to say McConaughey, but that's not what it says. <laughs> and Ruby from Ruby Red, Red, You Never Forget Your First, and that was for the Magic Treehouse read-along um, as one of their non-fiction books, I believe. Cool. Oh yeah, I have to give you a step forward. Prompter number five gave us free choice, which was great. And so the book that I decided to read for that one is The Satsuma Complex by Bob Mortimer. And if you wanted to see my review for this one, I have already done it in my January wrap up. So I can link that video down below if you want to hear my thoughts on this one. Okay, then we have free choice. So we have Lee from Lee Mack, read The Portrait of Molly Dean by Catherine Kovacic. I'm not sure how to pronounce the surname there, sorry about that. Amy read Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall. Carly read Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston, which in my head they have very similar colour covers, so they might look quite good together on the screen. <laughs> Brittany read Smile by Raina Telgemeier. Michelle read Brother Song by TJ Clune. Bouchen Shishi read Woman Eating by Claire Coda. I think I've yeah, I think that's what it's called. I think I've got a typo here. Jessica read Beach Read by Emily Henry. Abil read The Winter Long by Shauna McGuire. Amanda from The Reading and Writing Life read My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. The other Amanda read The Secret Diary of Adrian Mole, aged 13 and three quarters by Sue Townsend. Ashley from Ashley's Media Addiction read The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. Nat Katz, Bookish Cafe read Comfort Me with Apples by Catherine Valente. Danny from Somber Honey Books read A River of Royal Blood by Amanda Joy. Whitney from Tibera's Den read Babel by R.F. Kwong. Louisa read Encore in Death by J.D. Robb. Nadia read Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. And Ruby from Ruby Red read Legends and Lattes. And oh, Marlene also read Babel by R.F. Kwong. So Whitney and Marlene you both read it together. Did, well, probably you didn't read it together. Maybe you did. Um, <laughs> yeah, I hope you guys all enjoyed those three choices and that is one step forward. So the final prompt we got was song inspired and for me that meant I had to read a song inspired by Linkin Park, Pushing Me Away. And I was supposed to read Obsidio by uh, the third book in the Illuminae Files, but to be honest, I just was not in the mood for this book. I think I would have struggled to finish it anyway. I would have had to have rushed through it. And I just wasn't in the mood. And I thought, why put, pick it up if I'm not in the mood? I think with this one, I've heard negative things about the final book in this series. And I'm just really reluctant to pick it up, which is silly because I do want to read it to complete the series. But I didn't want to pick it up this month. I wasn't in the mood for it. So I thought if it's going to be a disappointment, don't go into it already feeling like you're not in the mood for it because then it might make it worse. So yeah, I didn't pick up this one and I didn't fulfill my prompt because I couldn't think of any other books that I read this month that could fulfill that prompt for me, specifically with regards to Linkin Park, <laughs> which was a shame. That means I have to take a step back on the board instead of a step forward. Bad times for me. Okay, now this is the sad time where I have to take a step back. <laughs> To this icon, which, of course, I do not know what that means, so let's find out in a sec. <laughs> okay, so I landed on the sun, and classic, I didn't know what it meant, but I looked it up and I'm pretty sure it means seasonal read. So, seasonal read always stumps me, and we're going into March, so I guess that's spring. I actually had to google spring books because I could never think of anything spring like I feel like summer is quite easy winter's easy autumn's easy but spring is hard I don't know why but I find spring hard anyway but I googled it and obviously the one of the first things that comes up is the secret garden so I could read that because also buzzwordophone for the month of March is secret so I feel like that actually works really well I was thinking to read something else for that but I'll talk about that in the video where I talk about the readathons and everything that I'm doing in March. Anyway, but The Secret Garden is a springy book, so I could read that. And let's go finally to you guys. So for Song Inspired, I really enjoyed these. I like, yeah, this is one of my favourite prompts for the month because I enjoyed seeing what songs everybody picked. Um, I don't know if I wrote everything down, so hopefully, yeah, I wrote some of them down. First up is Amy, and Amy read, um, well, Amy got the song Biddy Biddy Bom Bom by Selena, so she decided that she would read Friday I'm in Love 
um, who again, sorry, I don't know the author of that. This is bad planning on my part. Yeah, because she said it had a lot of dancing and party vibes to it and everything. And also, Friday I'm in Love is also the name of a song or a song lyric as well. So perfect. Jessica read The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, LaRue by V.E. Schwab. I think that might have been inspired by the one I got, Lincoln Park. But yeah, I might be remembering that wrong, but that could be. Boucher Nashishi read Asata, an autobiography by Asata Shakur, because they were listening to Tupac's Changes and Asata was his godmother, which I thought was really interesting. And this is the autobiography of, yeah, of Asata Shakur. So that looks really interesting. I do want to put that on my TBR, actually. A Bill read The Bullet That Missed by Roger. By Roger? Who's Roger? <laughs> Oh gosh, I've been I've been looking at all these like different books for so long I think I'm confused. Even though I don't think there's anyone called Roger here. By Richard Osman, and that was inspired by Hit or Miss by Newfound Glory. Okay, so Amy from A Star Reads did read Guilty Pleasures by Laurel K. Hamilton, and she said that that could have been inspired by Lincoln Park because it's like an urban fantasy and there's like difficult and dramatic scenes and everything. So yeah, Amy read that. <laughs> Amanda from The Reading and Writing Life read Freaks by Brett Riley. Danny from Somber Honey Books read The Water and the Wild by K.E. Omsby. And it's and Danny said that the title is very close to Horror and the Wild by The Amazing Devil, which is one of her favourite songs, which I don't know what that is, so maybe I should listen to it in a sec. Whitney from Tibera's Den also used Lincoln Park Pushing Me Away, and she read Ray Bearer by Jordan Ifueko. Louisa got Shake It Off by Taylor Swift, and so she read The True Love Experiment by Christina Lauren. Ruby from Ruby Red actually read a book, well, she read Year of the Monkey by Patti Smith, who is a musician, and I said that I would let that count as inspired by a song because you could be inspired by Patti Smith's songs. <laughs> and finally, Amanda read Where'd You Go Ber Bernadette by Maria Semple and that was inspired by the song Should I Stay or Should I Go by The Clash. I nearly sang, but unlike Amy from A Star Reads, I cannot sing, so I won't put you through that pain. <laughs> and that's everything, so let's take one step forward. And this one is the bookmark, which is the new prompt that I made which is to read a book that you've already started. Okay, so you guys landed on the bookmark, which is to read a book that you've already started. So I'm specifically using it for books I've already started in with relation to the game, or at least reader forms where I've started books and then I've given them up halfway through or very close to the beginning or whatever. So the one that I'm probably going to read for this one is The, S the Girl With Seven Names. Um, by Hyunzo Lee, because I did start reading this. This is about her experience escaping from North Korea. And I got up to page 60 and I found it really, really interesting. So I would like to pick this up and continue with it, which will be good. And the other reason that I wanted to pick this one specifically is because of the prompt for Genrethon, which is run by Whitney from Tibra's Den, which I'll be talking about in the readathon um, video thing that I'm going to put out soon. So yeah, this one would work for that and would work for this. So that would be good too. Okay, so we're going to start with my first roll to move down. So we've got my first prompt already. This is for the third prompt. So, oh, sorry, everything's shadowed today, but oh, it's the time of day I'm filming it, I'm afraid. <laughs> okay, so let's go oh, off the page. That doesn't count. Two, of course, because why would it be a high number? Um, let's go here. So this, I think this one is read an old favourite, specifically for me from my old favourites video. Okay, so I didn't move very far, <laughs> which seems to be a standard now at this point. I feel like even though we're only two games in, getting a sense of how things are going to go for me. So the third prompt that we have to fulfil is to reread a favourite. Specifically for me, this means reread a favourite from my favourites video I made probably about two years ago now, probably longer. And um, I don't think there's much on there that I have reread since I made that video, but I'll link it down below if you want to check it out. 
But anyway, I bought one of the books recently and it's only forward by Michael Marshall Smith. This is like a sci-fi book that I read. So the title of my video was books that I loved but I've now forgotten and yeah, I can't tell you anything about this because I've forgotten it. But I did absolutely love it when I read it when I was younger so I'm hoping that I will love it again and that it has aged well. Fingers crossed. <laughs> okay, the first roll for you, which is prompt number four, is six. <laughs> is this a joke? Like, I feel the universe is playing a trick on me. Uh, okay, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, it does mean that you have to move to the red trail. So this could not be all bad news for me. Um, although look how much further down you are than me. That's a joke. Okay, so this is read somebody else's favorite book so prompt number four for us is going to be reread oh not reread read another person's favorite book so i initially when i did make this prompt what i had in mind was to pick someone and have them just give you their favorite book to read Hmm. but i feel like that's a bit difficult and i don't really want to do that so i think i'm going to change it and say just if you know that a book is someone's favorite book and you think if you ask them they would give you that book to read or one of their favorite books they would give you that book to read then read it so for this one i think i'll just decide throughout the month i do feel like i want to read rebecca by daphne du maurier because it's on my 40 by 40 list and my mum read it recently and loved it and she's been going on at me ever since she read it for me to pick it up. Amy from A Star Reads did say that she would like to buddy read it but I know Amy is like chock-a-block full. Yeah so we'll see we'll see what I do with that one but I'm in my head I'm thinking maybe Rebecca. Okay and then my final role oh gosh if I could get here that would be great I would be happy with that I would be happy and then if you could get here and go up that would be great. <laughs> I'm really joking I'm not joking what? Okay, so two. I mean, I shouldn't have been so mean. Okay, so one, two. This is random page count. So I will, well, I'm going to roll the dice now, actually. And whatever number I get on the dice is going to be like the number of hundred pages we have to read from the book. So if we roll a one, we'll have to read a book with 100 and something pages, two, 200 and something pages. If it's a six, 600 and something pages. You get the idea. Okay, so let's see what we get. Two. So we have to read a book with 200 and something pages. That's quite nice, not gonna lie. <laughs> um, okay, so that was my final roll. So things are still bleak over here. Okay, so yeah, another two steps forward for me, which, yeah, <laughs> I'm so far behind you guys. Okay, so uh, anyway, the fifth prompt that we've got to fulfill is read a book that start that has 200 and something pages in it and there is a book that I'm going to be reading for my reading around the world challenge in March which is Passage of Tears by Abdurrahman A. Waberi and this has including the epilogue 216 pages so that works and yeah Emily and I are going to be reading this and we're also going to be reading I think it's called Hour of the Wolf which is like a steampunk science fiction book and it's the number one science fiction book in Lithuania because Emily's country is Lithuania at the moment. So we're reading this for Djibouti and that for... My fridge made a really weird noise, I don't know if you heard that. Um, yeah, so we're reading this for Djibouti and that for Lithuania. And then we're going to have a live show where we discuss both books at the start or sometime in April. So if you'd like to join us and you wanted to pick up either of those books or both or none and you want to just come to the live show and, and hear about them, then yeah, feel free, please do. So yeah, this one I'm going to read first in March and it will fulfill 200 and something pages. And now let's see if we can get a two for you. Two for you, two for you. Oh, it went off the table. Oh gosh. Okay. Four. Four, four, four. Okay, so one, two, three, four, and this is read the first book of a series. Which could this be a pain or could this be good? I'm not sure. Oh, you couldn't even see that. <laughs> Sorry. You're here now. <laughs> you went off the page. That is like the discrepancy of where we are. You don't even, we don't even really fit in frame together. We just fit in frame. This is a joke. And possibly this round could be over a lot sooner than I was hoping or anticipating. <laughs>
Okay, so the final prompt got you nearly out of shot compared to me so far down the board, which is, yeah, it's good. It's good for you. It's good for you. And if you can do a giveaway, that's great. Um, I just thought it'd be more of a race, you know, rather than a complete, like, runaway, runaway for gold. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, so the sixth prompt is... Uh, to read the first book in a series and for this I'm going to pick The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon because I'm reading this for Bookstar read-alongs. The Bone Season is the series that they're going to be reading this year so Bookstar read-alongs is run by Amy from A Star Reads, um, Danielle from Bookara and Paige from Pages with Paige. I didn't end up reading the books with them last year so I'm really excited to get back into it with everybody this year hopefully and yeah technically I have already read a little mini novella in this series but that's labelled 0.5, so that's not book one of a series, that's not the first book in a series, right? That's like the pre-series, the pre-series, the prequel series. So anyway, I'm gonna use the bone season for this one. I realised that I didn't actually update you on how I did with my TBR jar pick, which, can you see? My TBR jar is here, and it's packed to the brim of books that I have on my owned TBR. And I did say last time, every single time I play a round of the game, I will choose a book and then hopefully read it within the next month. And if it can fit a prompt, all the better. And last month I picked Agnes Grey, although I think I said Angus Grey, but I've since learnt it's Agnes Grey uh, by Anne Bronte. I did read this and I finished it a few days ago actually, and I really liked it. it was, I thought it was really funny. In this book you follow Agnes Grey, who is going off to work as a governess to try and make some money for her family and she in this book she works for two different families and the first one has like terrible children in it awful kids and who are young and then the second house she goes to are they're older kids they're more like teenagers i did like agnes she was a bit of a like sitting on a high horse perch looking down on everyone but she was funny as well but yeah anyway I really enjoyed this one and I would recommend it if you just wanted a quick little classic just to read of a slice of life into how things were back then for people who weren't actually upper class although kind of sad to read about how isolated she was working as a governess at that time but yeah I, I really liked it I thought it was a good I thought it was a good book I'm definitely in the mood for classics at the moment I feel like I've read a few classics this last month and now I'm in the mood for it, which is why I think I want to read Rebecca. <laughs> anyway, so let's go back to this. Oh no. Okay, so I already mixed them up on the sofa, so I'm just gonna pick one from the top. What colour shall I do? I'm gonna go green. I feel like this is gonna be a non-fiction. I just have a feeling it's gonna be non-fiction, which isn't a bad thing, but it's just something I'm maybe not in the mood for yet. And also I have so much on my TBR in March. Anyway. Okay, let's see what this is. Oh gosh, this is this is a non-fiction. Brighter than a thousand suns. So this is Brighter Than A Thousand Suns, a personal history of the atomic scientist by Robert Junkt. And actually I have already started this one, so this could count for a book you've already started on a previous TBR. I, it looks like I got to page 54. I have no memory of this, apart from now that I've picked it up, I seem to remember that I thought it was quite boring and it was really dry. But Bertrand Russell said one of the most interesting books I've ever read. It's more exciting than any novel, so don't take my word for that because maybe, I, maybe I'm misremembering. The story of the scientific research that led to the development of the first atomic bomb still constitutes one of the great dramas of our age. Based on interviews with the major participants and on official documents and transcripts, this is an account of the remarkable men and women who discovered that nuclear fission was possible and then became morally concerned about its implications. They were an international fraternity, freely exchanging the fruits of their research until the beginnings of World War II, when a number of scientists were forced to flee Germany and neighbouring countries. Lisa Meitner was one of them. I've read about Lisa Meitner. That was a good book. Several important German physicists were left behind for the duration of the war. How long would it take before Germany developed an atomic bomb? This crucial, crucial question was put to President Roosevelt. The facts about how he was persuaded to en enter the race to build a bomb and how scientists later failed to stop the use of the bomb are central to this compelling and horrifying narrative 
of which perhaps no aspect is more fascinating than the controversial case of J. Robert Oppenheimer. I mean, it sounds really interesting, to be honest, so maybe I'm wrong about it being dry. The English translation, it says, 1958 by Victor Gallantz. Um, so it's a book that was written in the 50s, basically. So it's kind of a very, it's a, an account from a time very close to when it actually happened, which I do like to read books that are like that because I feel, I don't know if you get a more honest opinion, but it's more fresh, you know, so it interests me to get opinions from the actual time and the fact that he's been able to do interviews with people then that interests me as well. So maybe this is not such a bad choice after all. <laughs> anyway, I've got way too much on my TBR. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to end up reading or what prompts I'm going to end up being able to fulfill. The other thing that I'm going to be doing in March is Roll of Reads, which is run by Mel from a book fiend named Mel. My initial plan was to do my roles as I go throughout the month. So that would choose my order of reading, if you know what I mean. But obviously it's going to throw curveballs in there where the prompts don't match any of the books that I have to read. So I don't really know <laughs> what, what I should do about that. Because, um, yeah, month, month of March will be over before I know it. Although I do have a week off within the month of March with no plans. So that could help. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. It's been really fun and thank you guys for playing along. As usual, uh, this month what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, so I counted books for this round up until yesterday, the 25th of February. So I'm going to count any books that you finish from the 26th of February up until when I'm going to put my next video out. So let's have a look at when that can be. So let's say we can count books that we have finished from the 26th of February to the 25th of March and then that gives me a good chance after that to work out the video and edit it and everything like that. You're obviously not going to get this video until after that so hopefully any books that you've finished will match some of the prompts that are on this list. Um, but yeah, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, much appreciated and I will see you in the next one. Take care!